Today's guest is Dr. Amy Sapola. I fell in love with Amy in this interview. You guys are going to love her too. She is so wise. Like truly, I'm like, if you want to get healthy, just listen to her. She's got it figured out. Um, so she is the director of pharmacy. It's a little play on words there. It's pharmacy with an F at the chef's garden. Um, so she actually is a pharmacist and has a um, bachelor's in nutrition. Um, and she's also a wellness coach and does functional medicine. Um, so this is the coolest interview. So I, you guys know, I love, I, I think you might know if you've <laughs> followed me for a little bit, I am obsessed with regenerative agriculture and work with rep provisions, um, who does regenerative animal products, but the chef's garden, they actually provide the plants. I've been waiting for this. I'm like, here you are. And it's really cool how it happened. And she shares in the beginning, um, that they used to only serve chefs who wanted, um, high quality plants grown in a regenerative agriculture environment, but through COVID with all the restaurants closing, like silver lining for us, they open it up to the general public. And so now there's both, right? So super cool. So if you're looking for regenerative plants, yay check out the chef's garden. Um, we'll link up everything in the show notes that you need. We get into, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like why this is so exciting to me that there's plants grown on regenerative farms. Listen, cause she's going to explain right in the beginning, like how regenerative works, you know, what that looks like, why it matters. Um, and then we get into intuitive eating. Gosh, we just roll. We get into all of our, you know, just two women that are very, very passionate about human and planetary health, just all of our thoughts on that. And it's, it's just great. So I, I at the end, you'll hear me. I'm like, I want to come out there. I want to come out there and film and show people what your guys's farm looks like. So if you guys are super interested in me doing that, hit me up and let me know. But um, if you want to check out their website, just go to farmerjonesfarm.com. Okay, so farmerjonesfarm.com and um, check out their pharmacy home delivery vegetable boxes that we'll talk about a little bit in the episode. Okay, here is Amy Sapola. Okay, everyone, before we dive in, I got to tell you about my new favorite partnership. And this is with F2 Meals. This is uh, through my friend, Drew Manning, Fit to Fat to Fit, if any of you know who that is. Um, Drew let me know that he had started a new meal prep company. And this is something I get asked about all the time. But to be honest with you, I've been a little hesitant to ever really recommend a meal prep company for two reasons. One, the food gets monotonous and it doesn't taste that good. And I just don't feel good about recommending it. And the other thing is food quality, right? So that is why I was so excited because Drew stuff, it's like, I know it's going to have, you know, coconut oil or avocado oil or olive oil instead of crappy stuff. Right. And on top of it, when he sent me some to try, I was like, I mean, my reaction was like, holy crap. I mean, they are so good. That's the thing is they taste so good. These are keto meals, but even if you're not keto, I've been eating them like crazy, even though I'm not keto because it's doing all the hard stuff. It's all the vegetables and meats and all the things that I don't want to feel, you know, I don't feel like making. <laughs> so like, for example, I've got with me, if you're watching on YouTube, if not on audio, I've got like a barbecue chicken wrap here and a bacon scramble and a zoodles and meatballs and some coconut waffles. And even my kids have been scarfing these things. That's how good they are. So wanted to throw those your way with a discount. If you want to use code coach, Terry and get 10% off at F2 meals.com. And we've got a link in the show notes. Okay. We'll get on with the show. Okay. So Amy, I don't think it's going to be any surprise to my podcast audience that I'm very excited to interview you and to talk about regenerative agriculture and the plant side. I'm like, where have you been? Cause I know a lot of regenerative ranchers that do regenerative meat, but I'm like, where do you get the plants? Who's selling these? Where do you know? Like I literally haven't found anybody before you guys. And so can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do and who you sell to and how that's evolved? Yeah, for sure. So I'm Amy Sapola. I'm director of pharmacy with an F at the chef's garden in here on Ohio. Um, real quick, just, so you know, my background a little bit too. I'm a doctor of pharmacy. I have an undergraduate degree in nutrition kind of brings all my passions together, cooking and gardening and all the things to come and be at the chef's garden. Um, for the last 30 years, we've really focused on chefs around the world. Um, the best chefs, the best restaurants, selling like 600, 800 different varieties of vegetables. We wow. have 10,000 different SKUs that we sell, like what? all different parts of the vegetables and herbs. Um, oh. But we're a regenerative farm. So that means that we're using farming practices that give back to the earth. 
really farming in harmony with nature versus just like take, 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 right? So yeah. there's no monoculture going on where we are with 600, 800 different varieties. Um, we really have a lot of diversity. We use cover cropping. Um, so what we found though, is we have an onsite lab too that actually does oh. nutrient density testing on our vegetables. Right what? now we're primarily looking at minerals. Um, but we find that our farming practices actually grow more nutrient dense vegetables as well. So, um, oh my gosh, earth, but it's good for you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes. I'm like so obsessed with, okay. So let's, for somebody who doesn't understand what you mean by like, we're giving back to the earth with, can you explain how that works? Yeah, totally. So if you grow like in a monoculture way, right. And you're using tillage and all those things, you're taking away nutrients from the soil, like season after season. And we yeah. know right now that like the amount of soil erosion or depletion, um, like kind of worldwide is not sustainable. There's only so much soil. And once that's gone, you're not able to grow things well and with the nutrient right. density. And over the last like 50 years, we've seen like 20, like 20 to 40% decrease in vitamins and minerals in the soil already. Um, so when we talk about giving back to the soil, what we're talking about is using cover crops. So that's using, we use um, like eight to 12 different varieties of plants and each of them are putting something back into the soil because some plants will pull things out of the soil. Um, some plants will put nutrients back into the soil. The perfect example of that is legumes, right? Like you grow legumes because they're putting nitrogen into the soil. So um, we grow a variety like mixed species cover crop. Um, and then sometimes depending on what it is and where we're at, we'll potentially mulch that, like providing like a green mulch, right? And then mm -hmm. using minimal tillage, because when you till, you not only disrupt the soil structure, you disrupt all of the microbes that are there and that are serving a huge function, right? And yeah. so just like in your own microbiome, you want a really healthy mix of microbes in the soil and you don't want to disrupt that. And so by minimizing tillage, by having the cover crops, we're trying to build our soil versus just like continually pull from the soil. Yeah. Yeah. So like cover crops, you know, like for somebody, you know, who's not familiar with this world, like yeah. uh, what does it look like when you're looking at a farm and you're seeing what does a monocrop look like and what does a cover crop garden look like? Yeah. So if I think of mono, monocrops is when you drive like anywhere in the Midwest and you see yeah. like just fields of corn or fields of soybeans. Right. And, you know, we talk about the effect of that on even pollinators and like the ecosystem that it's really tough on the pollinators when for miles, all there is is corn. Right. right? right. Um, but then also like looking at, you know, that diversity and how do you increase diversity? So in cover crops, we're just using different plants like clovers, um, like vetch, um, legumes, um, just different like vegetables, herbs, you know, different yeah. plants um, that help cover the ground. They provide a root system um, that helps keep water and moisture there too. So it reduces runoff, um, yeah. also helps filter the water that's going into streams. Mm. Um, and, you know, right. it helps keep water and moisture in the soil. So you require less input. So you're not having to always be watering your crops. Right. It holds in the water and the soil doesn't heat up as much from that cover crop. Mm -hmm. So it's like even less water exactly. besides the root structures, you know, cause you're not just trying to keep these plants from dying on this hot blazing bare ground. So yeah, yeah we did, uh, when we did our event out at rep provisions ranch in Oklahoma last summer, he made a little simulator for us. So he just left the, you know, the wild grass prairie that grows naturally there in Oklahoma. And he had this little area of land. And then the other half he made, he planted a monocrop. He was like, it kills me, but <laughs> it's for a good purpose, right? Of corn. And we talked. It. He made a rainfall simulator coming out of the middle, going on both sides. And it was something like 12 minutes or something until all of the, the monocrop, the corn, it just started running into this PVC pipe. And we let the, the natural, you know, what you're describing as a cover crop, we let that go for four hours before we might even finally just turn it off. Cause we're like, it's never going to run off into this thing. Right. And that's, you know, I'll, I'll highlight that was the thing that me, when I was learning about regenerative was like, wow, just the, the thought of how the topsoil runs off into our waterways and then into the oceans that we just lose it yeah. right we can't we can't keep up we can't keep up so this is amazing 10,000 SKUs 
Wow. This is so cool. And, you know, you were sharing with me that you guys open it to the public during COVID, right? Because all the yeah. restaurants were shut down and I'm like, well, what a blessing COVID was in a way. Cause like I was saying, I'm like, you're the first people I found that sell regenerative vegetables, plants, right? Like it's, it's hard yeah. to find. So it's yeah, that's you know, a good resource for people like me. <laughs> yeah. That's right now. We're one of the few farms too, that we're selling what we grow, right? We're not like buying it from all sorts of places. We're selling what we're growing and you know, it's grown on our farm and you know, it's grown with these practices. And the other thing is we harvest to order. So like, we're not just harvesting everything and then letting it sit for a long time and then shipping it. Right. We're like kind of in the grocery store where it gets shipped, you know, but like it gets picked kind of unripe and then shipped a long distance and then sits on the shelf for a long time. Ours is you place your order, we harvest it, and then wow. you overnight it to your home so that it shows yeah. up at your doorstep the next day. So it really awesome. helps to retain the nutrients um, yeah. and the flavor. That's what everybody talks about is like, this tastes like vegetables used to taste. And I think yeah. that's a really big thing is we know statistically, like from CDC data, that people just aren't eating vegetables like we used to. And, you know, right. not getting anywhere near the recommended amounts. And I think part of that is some of the vegetables are so flavorful flavorless now totally. that you find. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's coming back to some of the heirloom varieties and the varieties that really have so much flavor and so much color. And the beauty of it is like the phytonutrients, which everyone talks about is like being antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Those are what give vegetables their color and their flavor and their scent. And so yeah. not only are the vegetables that are like the most colorful and fragrant and like delicious, not only do they taste the best, but those are actually the highest in phytonutrients. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. I have a friend who's a chef and I went out to a little, I guess you could call it like a retreat, but it was just a bunch of friends that put it together for other friends. It was really yeah. beautiful. And he cooked for all of us and his recipes were so incredibly simple. It wasn't like he did some outlandish thing. He's like, you just get high quality food and it just tastes amazing. It's about the quality of the vegetables, the quality of the meat, the quality of the bread. You know, he's getting it from a local baker that's super high commitment to quality. And it's like, whoa, this is so good. And it does, I think, you're right. Like a lot of the reason people aren't eating plants anymore is well, like one, they're trying to avoid glyphosate all over the place, mm -hmm. right. Two, right. they just taste like bland. And I think, I actually think this is one of the main reasons we're seeing it. I mean, there's, it's multifactorial of course, but the nutrient density of our high nutrient foods is so much lower. You said 20 to 40% lower. Like you think you're eating really healthy, but you're missing all these key vitamins and minerals. I'm curious in your guys' lab testing, like, are there, I don't know, I'm just, maybe you don't know, but like, are there certain uh, vegetables that you've noticed? Like, wow, this is like really different when grown in a regenerative farm versus conventional. You know, I think across the board, we're coming up board. like higher than the USDA awesome. average on most of our vegetables. But wow. okay. one thing that I find really interesting is um, we talk about eating like root to leaf a lot of times and like yeah. not wasting, right? Because there's so much, yeah. waste. like if you look at even like beets and beet greens, if you look at the mineral analysis on those, the beet root actually has less minerals than the leaves, like the leaves wow. um, or the greens are actually more nutritious than the root itself. And, but we have so much focus on the root, right? And then we throw those greens away and, or they don't even wow. come with the greens on them. So I right. think um, part of it is just surprising, like looking at those things. The other thing we've been looking at lately is purslane, which is um, like a common garden weed, <laughs> but it actually contains omega threes. And one of the things, no way. Um, yeah. So one of the things we talk about, like, especially with vegan and vegetarian populations who aren't consuming fish, like what's a clean source that you can get for omega threes, right? Like you can have walnuts, flax. Um, the other thing is purslane. And so for about a hundred grams, of purslane, I don't even know what you're okay. So sorry. What, what, oh, what no, that's fine. A hundred grams of purslane has like 300 to 400 milligrams of omega threes, which is pretty good. So, and it's like a succulent herb, like you can put it in salads. Um, it just is kind of like a green, it is a little bit, um, it's like, like moist. I don't know how to describe it, uh -huh. but it has a lemony flavor to it. Um, it's delicious. So do you guys sell that? Yeah, we do. Process? How yeah. do you spell what you're saying? It's U R S. <laughs> L-A-N-E. I wish I had some behind me. I don't have personally with me today, but wow. I, I've never even heard of it. And yeah, you're, you know what you're saying about the beats, like we're kind of being, 
I feel like the, the centralization of food and grocery stores has caused a lot of problems. Honestly, yeah. it's like, I'm grateful for it. It seemed like a really great idea, but now it's causing like a lot of problems, but we're kind of being dictated. Like this is how you eat by the grocery stores. Right. So it's just like, I, I, I don't, I never eat and beat greens. I didn't even know you're, you could, or that they taste good. I've never even tried personally, you know, and I'm pretty into yeah. food, but like, that's such a good thing to know. And yeah, there's some documentary, maybe you remember the name. What is it called? Is it like, it's like wasted or rotten or something like that on Netflix where they're talking about all the food waste. Yeah, it's incredible. And that's, I even think about peeling carrots. Like I'm very against peeling vegetables, which is a weird Mm -hmm. thing to be against, but I feel like you waste so much of the vegetable. And if it's grown in a healthy environment, that is the interface with the microbiome of the soil. So really realistically washing off the soil is great, but you don't necessarily want to wash off or peel off all the microbes. And then that skin is what protects the um, plant. So say a carrot, like that skin is what protects it. And so that's where the highest concentration of phytonutrients will be anyway. Wow. Don't peel it off and throw it away. And like those little snack carrots are like the core of the carrot, which is not bad, but it's like the least right. nutritious, least tasty part of the carrot. And so they're convenient, wow. but they aren't like necessarily like the most nutritious part of the carrot. So wow, um, that's a really, really great point. You know, I, people always like kind of tease me because I love sweet potatoes. Like it's like, it's like ridiculous how much I love sweet potatoes <laughs> and they're like, Ooh, you eat the skin. I'm like, it's so good. Yes. And then yeah. I've gotten crap when I'm staying with friends at Airbnbs. They're like, you need to scrub your potatoes more. And I'm like, dude, they're fine. Like, I don't have to like scrub the crap out of them. Like they're okay. You know? Exactly. So but that's a really great point about how it's the interface with the soil microbiome. Right. So and yeah, it's really, yeah, so important just to be grown in healthy conditions where they're not using like potatoes can be super high in pesticides, right? And herbicides right. and all the things. Um, but if you're getting them from a place that's using regenerative practices, not using the synthetic inputs, like that makes all the difference. And that skin of the potato is so healthy and has fiber and all the phytonutrients and things. Right. Um, so totally worth consuming. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. Okay. So, um, I like, I'm thinking 10,000 excuses. So like, what are some of the parts of plants? I'm not, we got beet greens and we've got this, you know, like all the, what are some different things that people might not know that you can eat on plants that are like kind of popular, maybe amongst your chefs or just, you know, good ones to think of. One of the things I was emailing our team about recently, um, is this like, Okay. So if you look at a zucchini plant, like the stems of the plant, like leading up to the leaf are edible and people have been making noodles out of them, like cutting them up like a penne. And I think that's amazing. So that's one of them um, is like zucchini, like stems, like the plant stems. We have something called a root beer leaf, um, which we sell. And it's a leaf that literally tastes like root beer. (laughs) And it's awesome. Like to wrap fish in and steam or like do um, like a low carb wrap. Um, we, I'm trying to think of all the things like we have all different sizes too. So a lot of our chefs like things really small. And the interesting thing about the really small size is they haven't really gone into a lot of starch production, right? So they're generally smaller, really high in nutrients, um, and really compact and flavorful. And so, um, like I guess I can just show you like some of our cute little, like we have little tiny zucchinis, like little round zucchini. Wow. Um, we have like, like, if you're not watching and you're listening and that was like the size of like a (laughs) half the size of a tennis ball. (laughs) Yeah. You can see like our cute little eggplants. Right. And so, Mm -hmm. um, using small vegetables also just like the unique ones. So we have colors like, so this is like a purple bell pepper. Um, oh my gosh, guys, and, if you're not watching on YouTube, you want, what? I've never seen a purple bell pepper. That is and this is like the coolest, like light, light yellow bell pepper. Wow. Um, so some of it just comes from like the color variation too. One of our boxes is called eat the rainbow because literally mm-hmm. every month we're putting vegetables from each color of the rainbow in it. And yeah. just that like sensory experience. I know I'm really into like mindful and intuitive eating. And so just that sensory yeah. sensory experience of like totally. seeing the food and like appreciating the beauty and like the depth of color, I think can mm-hmm. really like change the eating experience and also can give mm-hmm. you like so much appreciation for the meal that you're eating. A hundred percent. There's something very, um, it's almost like healing. At least that's how I feel yeah. to be like, 
with like chopping up vegetables and like how many more can I add in and make the, you know, it's just this, this appreciation, this connectedness to mother earth gratitude. It's almost um, hypnotic when you're chopping up vegetables and cooking, you're kind of in this flow and you're, you're touching your food, you're connected to it. Yeah. And you know, boxes like this, I, I, my mind went to, I bet people are like, well, what am I going to make with that stuff? I don't know what to make. And this is just my, you know, I'm sure you guys have lots of support on this, but my personal opinion is pretend that you live in nature. Okay. You're like living outside and you found food and you're just trying to figure out, like get creative. If you will just add fat and salt, literally everything will taste good. So just find your preferred fat. If you're an avocado oil or, you know, olive oil or beef tallow or lard or bacon, if you cook vegetables and bacon grease and add the chopped up bacon and put a bunch of salt on it, like my kids devour that devour you know, so exactly. um, <laughs> it is really simple. And I think a lot of times we just overcomplicate it. And I was just yeah. writing a blog recently on like, you know, I think <laughs> it sounds really simple and maybe it's a little past its prime, but I think just even having a spiralizer, like I have a, I have a three and a I six have one. Year old and pretty much any vegetable as a noodle goes over great with kids. Right. And yeah. my husband and I like it that way. And then um, Vitamix or like a high speed blender is amazing. Yep. Like you can make vegetables into too. soup or, you know, smoothies or whatever so fast. Um, yep. And then a food processor and like a mandolin and you're good. Like yeah. <laughs> those things, yeah. maybe some sharp knives, but it really doesn't require like a ton of effort. And sometimes it's just appreciating the beauty of like the plant as it is. And like you said, yeah. like that energy of the plant, plants like, their energy um, vibrates like a lot slower than ours and like they like move more slowly, right? Um, mm -hmm. But like tuning into that and taking time yourself to like slow wow. down can wow. really like be a nourishing experience. And I think yes. um, that's one of the things about food and like even taking the time to cook for yourself or others. I think it's like giving yourself like that love and like compassion yes. and nourishment. Um, I think that just changes the eating experience. A hundred percent. It's a, uh, once you get into that flow, it, I don't really like eating out very much anymore. If it's going to be some beautiful experience where they put a lot of love into it, you know, I appreciate that. But once you get into that flow and you learn how, not only like how easy it is, like it really is, it's not that hard to like throw some roast, some potatoes and, you know, chop them up real quick and throw them in the oven with a bunch of avocado oil and salt on them. And they're freaking delicious. If you let them cook long enough, they get all crispy and it's like, Oh, I'm going to throw rosemary on them today. Or I can't wait to eat that. And you can just have them going in the oven while you're doing your other stuff. It's like no problem. We're just chopping up random stuff into a salad and getting creative with it. It, do it doesn't take that much time, but the time that it does take. You're exactly right. It's needed. We live in such a fast paced society and there's kind of a lack of gratitude that comes in. If all you're doing is like DoorDash and easy stuff, like there's something extremely, um, but that's what I mean by healing. It's there's something extremely healing by like connecting to things that came from the earth, appreciating them, taking time. I love that you're talking about the vibration of the, the vegetables is slower and they literally pull us into that little bit of a slower pace, which is mm -hmm. in my opinion, one of the biggest problems in human health right now is that we are so fast paced. We are just gassing ourselves out. Everyone's drugging themselves with, you know, caffeine and stimulants to be able to keep up with the fast pace and being able to connect back to mother earth, just through your food like this. And when you get a box, I've done boxes like this before, when you get a box like this and it's like this, like, well, for me, I've done ones where you don't know what you're going to get. Right. It's just like, whatever's in there is what you get some better and choose from you guys, yeah. but it's fun. It's like, Ooh, it's like a challenge. It's like, what am I going to do with it? you know? And so it's like, it's just like a little bit of joy. And I love that you guys are delivering, delivering straight to people's doorstep. Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So and that's, like super convenient. Think, yeah. We have our best of the season boxes like that, where literally it's the best of the day, whatever looks amazing is going to go in that box. And so cool. I think people like that for that reason, that it's like yeah, kind it's of a fun. little bit of a challenge and some yeah. of the things that you're like, what is this? Yep. But then you do a little research and you can yep. figure it out, but gives you a chance to kind of broaden into some different vegetables and kind of stay in eating with the seasons. And I think that's another yep really important Ooh. aspect is like, how do you really tune into eating seasonally? 
And I think that too, like puts you in tune with like the bigger picture mm -hmm. and my nature and is grounding. Right. And so oh. like, although whatever avocados and apples and all the things are great year round, like what can you do to eat, you know, what's seasonal right now locally? Yeah. Yeah. It connects you to the greater whole. Let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Um, intuitive eating. I know it's something that you're big on and I am too. Um, yeah. sometimes it's, you know, being in the nutrition world, it's, it's tough, right? Because people are, um, programmed. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of messages out there to people like, this is what you do. And, you know, I come, people come to me all the time. They're like, just tell me exactly what to eat. And I'm like, um, first of all, you're not going to do it. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Second of all, right. I don't want you to do that. Like you're going to get so nutrient depleted, you know, it's like, okay, fine. This is, you know, this way I do it. It's like, I will give you some ideas. I will give you a quote unquote, you know, menu, but like, I'm just being real with you. You're not going to do this. <laughs> you might do it for a little while and then you're going to give up and you're going to get in this really unnecessary mode of like, I'm failing, forget it. I'm just going to go eat McDonald's and whatever. It's just so unnecessary. It's such a disservice. I'm like, so here's some ideas, but I want you to bring in your creative flow. What sounds good to you? What is, you know, because it, it, maybe you feel the same way with intuitive eating, but our bodies have such different needs depending on what is going on with them. So for women, where you're at in your cycle, uh, for everyone, where, how, what was your sleep like last night? What are your stress levels? What, how much sun is there? How much have you been out in the sun? You know, like your body is telling you how much did you train? Did you train like a beast, you know, or do you never work out? Like your body's going to have different needs all the time. And if so, if you can start to tap in with joy, right? Like, like truly honoring that, like, wow, sweet potatoes actually do not sound good today. All I want is like steak and walk and protein and fat. And like, that just sounds so good today. And maybe tomorrow, all I want is blueberries and Greek yogurt and strawberries and oranges and bananas and apple, you know, like as I've leaned into that, my body has just thrived, you know? So I'm, I'm curious where, you know, what your thoughts are on intuitive eating and, you know, maybe how somebody, people tell me all the time, Terry, you can't just tell people to intuitively eat because they're just going to intuitively eat like Twinkies and donuts and whatever. And I'm like, well, they probably have candida and like, we can talk about that later, but I'm like, no, dude, no, yes, people can. I'm sorry. Yes, they can. They can pay yeah. attention to the healthy cravings, the healthy, what sounds good. So anyway, I'm blabbing. Yeah, What's, what are no, your thoughts on? I love that. And I so <laughs> agree. And people say the exact same things to me about it too. But, um, what I would say is part of intuitive and mindful eating is really tuning in with your body and having that introspection that you start to listen and take that pause and actually listen to what your body needs. Cause it's not about just like following cravings, but it's actually about listening right. to your needs. And wow. that's a lot different. And so sometimes it does take a little time because I mean, if you, if you look at all the processed food and stuff out there, that's meant to have you crave it. Right. And if yeah. you're on that, it messes up your own internal knowing. Yeah. And so yes. sometimes it does, it can be so hard and so confusing at first, but yeah. with time and with kind of that like self-kindness and letting go of like the yes. judgment and that like yes. falling into like, oh my gosh, I ate something. And now I'm just going to like go totally far fear off and mania. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like letting go of that. Like the biggest yeah. thing is kind of noticing. So yes. noticing how you feel right. So like eat what you're hungry for, notice how you feel and kind of learn from that. Right. And so maybe you learn from it and that is an awesome experience. And, you know, you had the steak and guacamole and you feel so good now. And you know, that next time you're craving protein, like that's maybe a go-to, but maybe you ate that and you're like, oh my gosh, my stomach hurts. I don't feel good. I'm not digesting it well. Like what went wrong? And so it's learning from each kind of eating experience and adapting and then having the like self-compassion to not always have to do it. Like nobody does it a hundred percent of the time. Right. Yes. And one of the things I talk to people about a lot is like, we are so in this fight or flight state where we're distracted, we're stressed. Like we are not in a rest and digest state when we sit down to eat. And I see so much like GI troubles, like all of this, like gut, gut issues, right. And like terrible digestion. And I, I have all these digestive problems and digestion starts before you even start eating. 
digestion starts when you smell your food, when you see your food. And so if you're going into a meal experience and you're super stressed out and you're thinking about, you know, you hate your boss and you got in a wreck or you were in a traffic jam, like you are not going to digest your food well. And it doesn't matter the quality at that point, right? Because you can eat the best food in the world, but if you're eating it and you're pissed off and you are, <laughs> you know, not watching the news or whatever else, right. you are not going to be able to digest that and your body's not going to be able to use it like it would otherwise. So yeah, you're just diverting blood flow away from your gut and then exactly. trying to digest food without the proper, you know, motility yeah. and function yeah. that it needs. And if you're yeah, not- we're- so aligned. I just, I had to highlight what you said about, um, just noticing, just noticing how you feel. There are plenty of times that I, you know, out with my kids, I might have an ice cream with them or, you know, if we're having a movie night and they're having some M&Ms or whatever, I might have some m and There's literally no pressure or judgment. It's just pure choice. And then just noticing how I feel that, I mean, I used to, I definitely used to have all these like binge restrict, you know, just really crazy, God, that life sucked. It was just this like second conversation in my head all the time. And healing from that has come from exactly what you said. It's just self-compassion, just taking off the pressure and just noticing, you know, okay, I don't really like the way I feel after I eat donuts. I just don't really like it. So the next time donuts are around, it's like, I, I can have those of course, but like, I think I'd rather have this yummy protein shake or protein bar that like, I feel really good after I eat that. So it becomes about how you feel in a non-judgmental way. And sometimes I might be like, no, I choose the donuts this time. I'm it's, it's worth yeah. it. And I'm like, okay. Exactly. You know, and it's just, that's it. That's all there is to it. You know, and you're right. There is, a, um, sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm a little woo woo. I, and I'm, I talk to my body and I have a relationship with my body. And sometimes I'll be in the grocery store in the produce section. And I'm like, what do you need? Mm-hmm. And I just wait. And it's like, I need, uh, you know, I, arugula. I'm like, okay. And it's fun. It's fun. Even it, I really think that it's, um, communication from the body, but even if it's just me making up stuff, it's still fun. You yeah. know, it's still something in me is saying that sounds good. And that's intuitive eating to me. And that's the biggest thing I think is really being able to tune in and listen. And so much of the time we're, you know, in our heads, like doing all this other stuff or just preoccupied right. and listening to what your body needs is so different. And I mm-hmm. think just taking time to breathe, like (laughs) how often are we not even like taking a breath before you eat? So most of the time I work with clients and I'll say, you know, put your feet on the floor, feel yourself in the chair, take three deep breaths before you even start eating. And that in itself can totally change your experience. And then if you want to go farther, look at your meal, smell your meal, like think about how it was prepared and then maybe start eating, you know, but it doesn't have to be like a long process and people don't even need to know you're doing it. Like it's yeah, pretty much right. You can do it anywhere, which is really nice. Yeah. And I find if I fill myself with gratitude, um, I, you know, I was very, very poor growing up. Right. And so I know what it's like as a little kid, like to not have food, like you're just really hungry and there's just not food. And I am really grateful for that experience because now in my, you know, I'm eating like regenerative organic, like really wonderful food. I'm so grateful. I'm like eternally grateful. It, it comes in all the time. I'm like, gosh, I'm so grateful for this. I'm so lucky. I know what it's like to not be able to have this, you know? And so filling myself with gratitude, it brings joy into the eating experience. And I think if you're in that state, obviously you're going to be more in your parasympathetic and be able to digest well. And I've had wonderful digestion. I'm grateful for that. And I really do think a lot of it is this, what we're talking about is joy. It's joy. It's joy with your food. It's gratitude. It's love. It's, you know, being present, it's listening and, and everything that you just described about intuitive eating is exactly if that practice, we do that, like in every area of your life, it will bring so much joy and alignment. Like just noticing, just noticing how I feel when I choose that, just noticing yeah. how I feel, you know, it's, and it's just my beauty. And like, I, yeah. so I really have studied like mindful eating and I'm trained through um, the center for mindful eating. And I highly recommend looking at their website, but um, they really mindfulness, they're like coming back to mindfulness, mindfulness can be practiced. Like you said, in all aspects of life. And you can't intuitively eat without that mindfulness piece, right? And so it's bringing that like non-judgmental presence 
and just right. like being present for what's going on right here, right now, not yeah. in the for you know, not in the future, not in the past, but like what's right now. Yep. And I just have to vouch. I mean, what you're saying is I, the, that's the process I use to help people get past like binge restrict type stuff. Mm-hmm. It's just, you can eat whatever you want and just come in, just notice how you feel when you do like really, yeah. truly. And you can't lie to yourself. You can't say I can eat whatever I want. And then there's this 1% like, no, don't eat it. Nope. Just have the, have the candy, so, you know, I'll have people there. They're hooked on gas station at 10 o'clock at night by, yeah. you know, and I was like, go ahead, go ahead go ahead. Yeah. Like, go ahead. You know, <laughs> like truly you just notice how you feel after you do. And it's just that, that permission just, is so relaxing. It helps people to come back into themselves and just truly choose. So yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That's um, an awesome book by Fred Provenza called nourished. And he talks in there about, um, animals a lot, but like in, um, animals and like having them on pasture and feeding them like a multivitamin supplement versus like individual nutrients and like being fed a multivitamin supplement, they'll overconsume it because they're looking for one nutrient potentially, like say they're zinc deficient and it only has so much zinc in that multivitamin. They may like consume more than they need of that multivitamin, just trying to get enough zinc. And so I think having that like diversity in your diet and not like just having everything like, you know, like as a multivitamin essentially, but actually having different nutrients and being okay with not having the same thing every day um, can be so, so valuable. So valuable. Like it, it, it kills me when I see people eating that. I know, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, I have egg whites, oats <laughs> and with, you know, sugar-free syrup or whatever every morning. And then I have chicken and then I have the same vegetable and then I have chicken again. And then that same vegetable and I have chicken again. And then I have the same vegetable, you know, it's just like, that's, you know, it might quote unquote change your body. It, yeah. I'm sure it will change your body composition, but like think how nutrient depleted you are in so many ways. And I, yeah, you hit a great point about cravings. Um, my sweet potato love that I mentioned, one thing that I learned when I did a hair mineral analysis was that I was, I needed more manganese and sure enough. And I also have this love with garbanzo beans, chickpeas, right? Like I'm obsessed. Like I can't get enough. Both are super high in manganese. I was like, Oh my gosh, there it is. You know, (laughs) And no wonder I'm just pummeling them, you know what I mean? But my body needed them, you know, and I yeah. think it's a great way to get it. So I'm not complaining, but and you can learn so much from listening to your body. That's the thing. <sighs> like, you know, you don't need really expensive blood tests necessarily. Like you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know, those are the foods that you need and you were already yeah. doing it. And like the blood test totally confirms it, which is so cool. And I hear that all the time that people like they know what's going on and they yes. know what they're craving. Yes. And, you know, it's sometimes it's just that like, um, reassurance that they're right, you know, and yes. you know, a lot of times you're, like you're trusting like the external, like you're trusting the <laughs> expert or you're trusting somebody else, but like, you know, inside of you. I feel you so much. Oh my gosh. Really? It's just like, so we are so aligned. I, you know, uh, so I have a book called short-term keto. So like I, it's all do keto not forever. So, yeah. so I did keto and I personally feel like I did it a lot longer than I needed to. I did it for a full year. I don't think I needed to do keto that long. And what started to happen was exactly what you're describing. It was like, I just felt so unsatisfied. And I was like, I know if I could just have some blueberries or some strawberries or freaking apple or something like, I know I would be good, but I can't cause I'm doing keto. So I'm just going to eat all these nut butters and these keto cookies and these keto and just still it's not working. And so finally I just said, forget it. And I was like, I'm just, you know, I know what my body needs and it needs carbs and man, my blood work went up. My gut health went up. My body composition went up. I felt better mentally. You know what I mean? And I was very, very deep in the keto community at this time. Right. And so it was, I was like, I don't care. I'm doing it. This is what my body needs. And so I ended up writing a book about it and sharing that with people, you know, and I, keto can be a very, 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 very um, helpful intervention for people who need it. But at that point in my journey, I did not need it. I did not need to be keto any longer. And my body was like, Hey, why don't you just like eat some carbs? That would be like really awesome. If you could just eat some carbs, please eat some carbs, please eat some carbs. But I was so indoctrinated into this way of thinking until I finally just started listening to myself again and everything got better, you know? So yeah, you know, and I, I say, you probably have had similar thoughts. I'm like, sometimes I feel like what I do for a living now is give people scientific reasons that their intuition was right about what they needed all along. 
Yes, that's exactly it. That's what I'm like, just, you know, trust yourself. And that's exactly like, yeah, just reaffirming that like, you know, best and like, yeah. you know, the things that have been tried and true all along, like, I don't think there's going to be too much research coming out that vegetables are bad for you. Right. Like yeah. there's, there's just certain things that are like plants, vegetables, you know, yeah. those sorts I- of things, grass fed animal protein, if that's your thing, like those sorts of things are hard to argue with, I think. And so, yeah. you know, I think there's a lot of stuff that comes and goes, but like our mm-hmm. own intuition and like our own kind of like nature based whole foods, like that, that's not really going to change. And that's kind of the, the common thread among many of the like popular things that come and go, whether it's diet plans or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know I- you mentioned it before, but I think you know, as women too, being really in tune to like the menstrual cycle and how does that change? Like it is normal to carve more, crave more carbs in the last week of your cycle. Right. And so I think like prior to menstruation, it is extremely normal because you're producing more progesterone. And so, you know, in order to support healthy hormones and healthy metabolism, like that is like a normal thing. It is not something that needs to be like suppressed. And yes, the other you. thing I would say is, you know, we've gotten so much guilt and shame around eating. And I think, like you said, going back to joy, but also like <laughs> pleasure and like really yes. acknowledging like the pleasure of eating and right. like how that can be really important to your whole, like yeah. whole experience. Right. Yeah. And the whole cascade in your body, you know, I've seen so many women, like they over consume. It's like, let me just have a bite of that cheesecake and no more. And then they end up wanting to binge on it. And it's like, well, if, if you will just like, actually just enjoy it and give yourself full permission, you'll probably end up eating less. So you just, you just eat whatever feels right. You know, there's no weird restriction. And yes, thank you for mentioning that on progesterone the week of your cycle. Cause I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, the only way I know my period is coming is I'm really freaking hungry, <laughs> really freaking hungry. And I just eat, I, yeah. um, I'm just hungry. And I just eat. And it's like, obviously I haven't become obese yet, you know? And it's just, it's honoring that. And I'm not killing it as much in the gym. It's just like, I don't know. I just, I'm an intuitive workout or too. So yeah. people always want to know like, what's your plan? And I'm like, listen, like I'm at a level now where I can just listen. And I think everybody can, honestly, it's like, if I get in there and I don't feel the energy levels to go crush a weightlifting workout, I just walk, I just yeah. walk and catch up with business stuff on the phone and go home, you know? And it's like, I'll just wait till I feel that level. And that has produced such amazing, it's produced so much ease. There's so much ease available to us. If we'll just let go and just start to listen to what we need, trust our body. You know, I do it in meditation. I ask my body what it needs often. Right. And it's like, like the other day I got back from a trip and it was like a lot of vitamin C, a lot, like a lot, like take it like three times a day. And it, I was laughing because it, when I had gone grocery shopping, the night I got back, I was getting oranges and like cherries and like all these, and I never buy oranges. It was just like, Oh, got it. Okay. You need a lot of vitamin C. Got it. You know? Yeah. And it was probably just needed to kind of clear things out from traveling and being stressed and speaking and all these things, you know? So yeah, like honoring that creates so much ease. Um, the last thing I want to hit on with you is like, okay, first I just have to say this cause it keeps popping up price costs money. This is, I just have to say this in yeah. terms of supporting regenerative agriculture, the way I look at it is look at it as I look at it as my charity that I donate to a cause that I donate to and I get free food. That's how I look at it because the that's work that's being done for mother earth is so freaking important. What's being done for the advances in human health is so freaking important. Like, I just want to give anyway, and Hey, a bonus, I get some food back. So like, if you're, you know, at all able to buy regenerative, uh, agriculture, whether it's the meats or the plants, like think of it that way, like you are using your dollar to vote for one of the most important to to me, there's nothing more important. I'm like, that's why, you know, I wanted to have you on. I'm like, we need all the mics and cameras we can get on regenerative because people have no idea that we're losing our topsoil and we can't regenerate it fast enough. I actually heard from somebody on the inside loop that some of the bigger, like giants that have kind of led to some of these problems. Like I think it was general mills or one of those kind of companies they're looking into regenerative now too, because they realize they're not going to have any crops if we, if they don't support it. So I'm like, yay, by force, we have to start. (laughs) 
<laughs> healing yeah. mother earth, you know? <laughs> and that's, it's amazing how, you know, more and more people are kind of jumping on board, but yeah. it needs to happen quickly. And that's really, yes. I think the biggest thing. And yes, it may cost more, but I think in the long run, the cost, like the benefits far outweigh the costs. And Holy. even just looking at healthcare spending, like 50 yeah. years ago, we spent like a federal spending, like one out of every $20 on healthcare. Now it's one out of every $3. When you look at wow. federal and state budgets wow. are going to healthcare related expenses, wow. which is not sustainable. Like how do you do right. anything else when one out of $3 is going to healthcare? And one of the right. statistics I saw is like the average um, insurance costs for like, not like state insurance, but like average insurance costs per person now is around 11,500 a person per year. And so if you have a family of four, I mean, you're looking at like 45, $46,000 a year, just in health insurance. Insane. And so I think the costs of, you know, like not being healthy is rising astronomically. And to the point where people just cannot afford to not do something about it. Right. And so I think, um, looking at cost avoidance, even though that's not like sexy is also a really important thing to consider. Yeah. I mean, it's, you're investing in your whole quality of life and your food tastes better. You know what I mean? It's just like, and like, you know, I look at it as supplements this way too. Like you can go on Amazon and let's say you want to take whatever, let's, let's use a multivitamin. <laughs> that's a great example. <laughs> you want to get a multivitamin at Walmart right? Like you're going to get such a low quality thing that has such low absorption, you know, you're spending money, but you're not, you're going to have to spend so much more money to get anything out of that. Like if anything, and then you go, you know, I like this company called Quicksilver Scientific because it's like, I like them too. Yeah. You like them, right? Like it's all liposomal. Yeah. They attach them to phospholipids. They get through the cell membrane. They're a little bit more expensive. They're not that expensive in my opinion, but a yeah. little more expensive, but you're getting so much more out of that. You're actually getting it, you know? And that's how I'm looking at regenerative meat, you know, rep had an independent lab test on their, on their meat. And it was a one-to-one -one omega-3, omega-6 ratio, omega-6, awesome. you know, ratio, which is awesome. Right. You know, it versus you're buying meat at Walmart or whatever, and you're getting probably like a nine to one omega six, omega three ratio. So it's more inflammatory. You're spending money, you're decreasing your health. Like it's just, it's wasteful, yeah. you know, whereas like you could just spend it in the first place on things that are promoting your health and you're going to end up saving money in the yeah. long term, and your whole quality of life is going to be better. Like yeah. it's a no and that's, brainer. it makes me think about the research on fish oil too. Cause like fish yeah. oil that's oxidized is more likely to raise LDL, which is exactly right. what you're not wanting to do. Right. Right. And so most people are taking it to lower triglycerides, but they'll see like increased LDL if you're taking oxidized fish oil. And so, you know, thinking about quality, yeah. Quality of food, yeah. quality of supplements, like right. those things matter and do have like an effect on the outcome. You're, I think you're going to spend less money in the long term. Plus, if your food right. that you're making at home tastes good, I, I guarantee you that I spend less money than a lot of families on food because I hardly ever eat out. When I do, yeah. I've got four kids. I'm like, that was like 60 bucks for like burgers and fries. Like, what a freaking waste. You know how much like good <laughs> food I could have gotten for that that would like last us forever and like we'd feel amazing after. And now we're kind of like, Meh. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if you change your systems in your life and you promote it to towards things that are high quality and you let go of all this low quality, you know, it's a quantity that that's the yeah. American way is like, how much can I get for the least amount of money possible? Like that mentality is destroying us. If you yeah. can switch that in your life to how much quality can I get and let go of all these other things that I don't really need everything. You actually save money in the long run and your whole life is better. You know, yeah. it's the same mentality with like shopping sales. I'm not going to go to some store because they're having a sale and just buy a whole bunch of crap that I don't need. I'm going to wait until I need that thing and just buy it. Right. I'm yeah. going to save time, save money, you know? So it's the same, it's a, it's a mentality, you know? Yeah. Um, I was just blogging on that today. Like letting go <laughs> of that, like calorie is a calorie thing, right? Yeah. That, that needs to go. That needed to go a whole long time ago because yes. quality is so important. And like, it's just, I think, um, I always think of like, how would I rather spend my money? Right. And like you yeah. said, like, if you go and get 
you know, like heaven forbid you have a cardiac event or something, like you have a heart attack, that is a hundred thousand dollars or more. Like, would I rather spend a hundred thousand dollars over my lifetime buying yeah. really good food and like enjoying yeah. it and having fun yeah. with my family? Or would I rather spend it on hospital, heart attack? You know? And right. so I think just thinking about like, yes, yes, it definitely takes resources. And, you know, I understand that not everybody is in that place right. but if you're in the place that you're able to yes. make that decision yes. I think it's really like valuing kind of yourself and kind of being able to like choose that um, for you and your family is really yep. impactful and even if you're in a place where you're just like it's really tight because I've been there right yeah. you know, like I used my ex-husband was a teacher and I was a stay-at-home mom and he was like a first year teacher right so like I've been in that place where it's like holy crap like it was, it was so tight but like you can be smart about it. You know, like we have sprouts grocery stores here. Like you, they have amazing sales where we get organic stuff, whatever was on sale that was organic. That's what we ate that way. You know, so you can make like little shifts like that, that I'm like, this is cheaper than like the regular grocery store for the, you know, conventional stuff. Right. So, and it feels good. It feels really good. And I think if you pay attention to that feeling, you know, it'll drive you into things that are in your own best interest. Um, last thing I wanted to like close with on you is like, okay. So, um, so forgive me for bringing up rep a lot because like that, they're just like, it's so the regenerative experience is so yeah. wrapped up into that for me. But like when I, yeah. one thing that they do is like the, Eric, the rancher there is really big on, um, helping preserve the monarch butterfly, uh, migration, right. Because we're losing it because of all these monocrops and the little weeds that they feed off of are being ripped out. So he will send, he'll zone you where you live and like send you a packet of these seeds. Right. I'm like, these are the kind of people guys, these are the kind of people. Like he just does that. He just gives you that. He's like, please throw these in your yard to help save the, the modern yeah. butterflies. And then we, you know, we, there were bees and like, there's just such an honoring in him of, of being a part of the greater whole versus a partaker Mm -hmm. of, you know, it's like, what can I get out of this? What's in it for me? It's like knowing your part, you know, and can you share any thoughts that you have about like, just what you've learned being in this environment of what you guys are doing of being part of an ecosystem? Yeah. Oh, totally. And so our farm is a family farm. It's a third generation family farm owned by two brothers, um, Bob and Farmer Lee. And Farmer Lee is the one that you may have seen before in the overalls and bow tie. Um, but oh, yeah. They, yeah. So they both will say, you know, we're not just farming for people today. We're farming for future generations. And I think Beautiful. that's really how we have to think. And, you know, like we just we have bees on the farm, too. Um, so we have like about 40 beehives on the farm. And awesome. I think it's that whole ecosystem, like it's supporting more than just I'm growing this one crop for one purpose we're trying to feed people and also like like give back to the land and support yeah. like the ecosystem and it's not really about like the one thing in the one ecosystem right it's like it's the whole system and supporting all parts of it yeah. um so yeah. yeah it's the same way as like the body with intuitive eating and not being like a calorie is a calorie like can you lose weight doing the calorie you know the twinkie diet or whatever yeah but you're neglecting the entire system and you're like wrecked your hormones and you know you've got inflammation <laughs> and, and right. it's, it's, so it's the same way you guys are looking at it it's just like it's it's about honoring the system as a whole you know we could get into carbon sequestration and like how our oceans are trying to take on too much carbon because our root systems are gone and like it's just there's so many aspects and it's really, truly, I don't know about you. I'm sure you've had these thoughts. I, I'm just like, mother nature is trying to just teach us how it works. Mm -hmm. Like we just plopped onto this planet a little bit clueless by whatever theory you have about, you know, divine design or whatever. And it's like, it's about noticing, you know, like she's yeah. teaching us all the time. Like, Hey, it works like this. And we're coming in here like, mm -mm, we're going to fix it and make it better. We're going to change it all up. And it's just like, Oh, if we could I just sit and more. learn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think the thing is, you know, I talk all the time about like the innate wisdom of plants and like mm. there, there are studies about like, um, antioxidants. And if you take antioxidants separately, they don't have the same effects. Um, at least in the studies oh. that taking like eating antioxidants in wow. food and, so, you know, there's this like wisdom and complexity yeah. to plants that we try to simplify. And like starting in the 20s wow. and 30s is when we started 
coming up with this like single vitamin thing where we focus on like one nutrient and that's the nutrient, you know, it's it's so much more than that. And when you look even just at the body systems and like, look at the Krebs cycle and methylation cycles and all the things, you know, it's not one vitamin they're working in, like they're working kind of in sync with each other and it's a complex network. Um, and so I always like to think about that, even like, even in farming or anything else, like it's like a web, right. And so it's a complex, like interconnection. And I think, um, that can be applied to so many different parts of life and farming and vegetables. Um, but that interconnectedness is really key. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. It's about, I mean, uh, we don't know how the body works. We don't know how the planet works. There's so much we don't know, you know? And so it's like this abundance is just being given to us. Like here, here you go. Like, you don't have to know how it works. Just receive what I'm giving you. Okay. (laughs) Simple as that, right? Like we're making it so hard on ourselves trying to figure it all out. And it's like, you actually don't have to, you just, just receive, just receive. It's all here for you. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Now you can move on. You know, it's like that kind of mentality. It's just accepting the abundance that is here for us. And there it, you're, you're so right. I mean, I, I'm a fan of plant medicines, um, psychedelic plant medicines, and there's, you know, there's synthetic psychedelics and it's not the same as the plant ones. It is not, there's not even close in my opinion to the level of teaching yeah. and ancient wisdom that comes from the plant forms. It's like, I've been taught that it's like, see how this is not as good. Like you're not, it's good. It's helpful. It's fine. You know, I'm thinking of like synthetic vitamin C versus an orange, right? right? It's like, it's, it's cool. But like, yeah, there's a, there's a complexity, I think to nature that we don't understand yet. We don't understand yet. So we might as well just receive and just trust. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. Well, we will go ahead and close it up. I'm so glad to meet you. I like want to come out on a field trip now to your farm so I can like do a video podcast. I want to see it all. I want to see the bees. I want to see the cover crops. (laughs) Oh my gosh, we would love that. You're welcome anytime. That would be so awesome. All right, I'll link up with you because I like to do those. It's fun. I think it's fun to be able to actually see what's going on. But this has been so amazing. I'm happy to meet you. I'm like, yay, fellow soul tribe. (laughs) (laughs) Yay, I feel the same. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.